It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, Order of Nowhere. Only a few minutes before, the saloon had been filled with laughter. The easy banter of cowpunchers lined up at the bar. Now, a silence has settled over the room and there is tension in the air. The sheriff, a red-headed giant, rolls a cigarette, strikes a match, his eyes never leaving the man across from him. All right, Mr. C.A. Round here, a man's generally entitled to his own opinion, but he's got to back it up with a six-gun. That means right now. Outside. <laughs> Meanwhile, down the street, Lucy Marriott, the widow Marriott now, is getting ready to close up for the night, taking the trays of meat from the display counter back to the icebox at the rear of the store. Chip? Yeah, Ma? Well, what in the world are you going to do with all that, Stuart? Melt it down into tallow. Mr. Garvey offered three cents a pound, and I was... <laughs> oh, mercy, honey. We're not that hard up. <laughs> Every little bit counts, Ma. I, uh... I... You what, darling? Well, I know how hard it's been on you since Pa was... Since Pa died. Well, we'll make out. I wish I was bigger. It ain't right. What? A lady like you having to run a meat store. Oh. It won't be long, Mom. I'll be big enough to run it by myself before you know it. Good afternoon, ma'am. Sorry to bust in the back door that way. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but we're closed for the day. What do you want? Right now, I want you to shut up, Sonny. That goes for you, too. I told you, we're closed. I didn't come here to get no meat. <laughs> At least not the kind you're selling. You get out of here, mister. You ain't gonna stay. Oh, Chip. Chip, how oh, you hurt. Oh, I'm all right. I'll get this, both of you. I ain't as sensitive as some. I just as soon kill you as look at you. Now get behind that counter and stay there. Come on, Chip. Oh, what do you reckon he's up to? Why is he back in that Winchester? Can you see out the window? Wait. Yeah. Down at the saloon. Sheriff Bantry and some man out in front. Oh, what is it? The duel. That's why he's here with a Winchester. Is he? Yes, he's going to jump. You want to die? Yeah. You shot him in the back. One word, see? Just one word about me being here. Chip? Him, too. Mom, don't think about me. I... Go on, get out of here. And don't worry, we won't say anything. What good would it do? What good would it do? The two riders, burned by the sun and covered with the red dust that lay deep on the trail behind them, mounted the ridge and looked down for the first time on Velvet Valley, with the little town of Cherokee nestled at its northern end. It was an unbelievable sight. Behind them, miles of sun-baked desert, then the ridge, then, directly ahead, the rolling green of the valley, the lush cottonwoods and willows strung along the creek down its center. Hobby. Yeah, California? Mind if I say just one little word? I'm too tired to fight back. Go ahead. She's a lovely spot. 
Ain't never seen a prettier valley, but it still don't make sense to beat me down to the size of a dried-up horny toad and, and put saddle sores all over my cayuse riding halfway across the country to pick up a hundred head of cattle we could have bought at the ranch next door. End of speech. Quite a mouthful. I feel ten pounds like <laughs> And as usual, your tongue's going at a high canter while your brain still got the hobbles on. I, uh, no, look here, Hoppy. Ah, <laughs> don't get riled now. I might not have told you we're after a special kind of cow. It's not we're buying from Ed Allison or Aberdeen Angus. And you can't find them on the ranch next door. Uh, why are we going fancy? What's wrong with our white faces? Nothing. But I want to see how this breed will do on that flatland south of the ranch house. And besides... Drives uh, what? Peaceful-looking town, isn't it? Yeah. But it's up to its ears in trouble. Uh, what do you mean, Hoppy? I'm not sure yet. We'll know more after I talk to Ed Allison. Sit down, Cassidy. Thanks. Now, look, Allison, I want you to understand one thing. I'm not questioning your price, but... Uh... I know what you're going to say. Twenty-one dollars ahead, two dollars trail insurance. Yeah, and if you just said twenty-three and left out the rest, I'd have paid it and gone home with my cattle. But sure, only if I put it down that way, I wouldn't be telling the truth. Hmm. Who gets the two dollars? Peasley, the mayor of Cherokee City. He's uh gone into the insurance business as a sideline. You pay him your two dollars ahead, and then if your herd gets rustled on the drive home, he buys you a new one. Hmm. You had rustler trouble around here lately? This town was born with it, Cassidy. We're sitting on the edge of a, of nowhere out here. Everything west of town is outlaw country. The nearest United States Marshal is 150 miles away. You got a sheriff? Yeah. Yeah, we got a sheriff. What does that mean? I think I've said enough. I don't. Go on. Well, we got a sheriff. We got a mayor. We got a judge. Three biggest crooks from Peace River to the Rio Grande. Everything about electing a set of new ones? We tried it once. Nice, peaceful election. Everybody voted. What happened? We lost. Huh? Sure. The mayor counted the ballots. Oh. Well, if the people around here will put up with that kind of thing, they pretty much deserve what they get. Oh, I felt like you do, Cassidy. So did someone else. A fellow named Marriott who used to run the meat store down the street. About a year ago, he decided to do something about it. How far did he get? About as far as the dry gulch west of town. They found him face down with a bullet in his back. Then there was a little ruckus in front of the Gem Saloon last Sunday. Oh? CA man blew into town, Cattlemen's Association, special investigator or something. Been snooping around in the hills for a couple of weeks. Sat right down with Sheriff Fancher in the saloon and accused him of heading up to the rustling operation around here. Mm. The sheriff walked him out in the street in broad daylight and stood him up for a duel. While one of his boys laid for the CA man down the street with a Winchester. They buried him Monday at Poplar Grove Cemetery. So I pay my trail insurance and take my cattle home safely. Is that it? That's it. Ever been a trail herd rustled yet that paid first? They level on every herd passing through. Hmm. They've got every man jack in the territory shaking in his boots, afraid his ranch house will be burned, his wife and children killed if he opens his mouth. Hey, where are you going? To see Mayor Peasley, or insurance broker Peasley. I want to talk to him about my uh, policy. Uh, let's see now, Mr. Cassidy. One hundred head of Aberdeen Angus. Want to trade them yourself? That's right. The two hundred dollars cash in advance. And what does that buy me, Mr. Peasley? A hundred head of cattle, if you lose these. You think that's likely? Well, an awful lot of rustling going on around here lately. Uh, you want to pay now, Cassidy? I think it'll be kind of extravagant, don't you? Oh, why do you say that? I mean, since I already got rustler insurance. And I didn't pay any $200 to get it either. You already? Yeah. Cost me $50. Two six guns at $25 a piece. Excuse me a minute, will you? Sheriff? Yeah? Wait a minute, will you? This is Mr. Cassidy, Fred. Sheriff Fancher. Howdy, Cassidy. Hi. I've tried to explain to Cassidy that we've got the powerful problem on our hands with the rustlers. Ah, uh, sure have. The, um, don't think you'll take out trail insurance. Oh? Uh, gonna take a chance, Cassidy? You think I'm taking a chance, Sheriff? Sure do. The hills west of here are full of outlaws. The last herd that went through without paying, uh, I mean without taking out insurance, mm -hmm. uh, 
How many was it they killed, Beasley? Four. From the herd off, too. About 500 head. Must have made you both pretty mad. Oh, I was fit to be tied. Stan Marriott, uh, he was alive then. Come in with a couple of gunslingers he claimed was behind the rustling. And we stood him up before Judge Corson for trial. Jury? No. You see, we couldn't find no one willing to serve on the jury, so Judge Corson had to try him himself. Mm-hmm. They was acquitted for lack of evidence. Yeah, it seems to go that way every time. Must be pretty discouraging for you, Fancher. Pulling crooks in only to have them acquitted. Enough to break a man's heart. Yeah. Uh, what about the uh, $2 a head? I've never had to buy protection yet, Teasley, and I don't think I'll start now. Well, it's your funeral. Think so? Yeah. Take another look at the name on the coffin. Never can tell. It might be yours. <laughs> Out and down some town, Sonny? Oh, that's right. Well, my name's Chip Marriott. Glad to know you. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. Bar 20? Yeah. How did you know? I'm pretty far from home. My dad used to talk about you. Don't reckon you knew him, but he knew you all right. He told me once you was the kind of man he wanted me to be. I... I'd like to have known your dad, Chip. You got here a year too late. Yeah. Chip. Yeah? Maybe we're too late to save your dad, uh, but maybe we can finish the job he started out to do. He, he'd have liked to hear that, wherever he is. I keep promising him, Mr. Cassidy. I keep telling him I'll do it for him when I get big enough. You're big enough now, Chip, for a size count. You think so? I know it, and I'll tell you another thing. Wherever your dad is, he's so proud of you, he's ready to butt. Oh, uh, we're coming. Come on, Chipper. Let's go and talk to your ma. But I tell you, I'm tired of fighting and killing. I don't want any part of it. I don't like it either, Mrs. Marion. But there's no choice. You have to fight them or stand back and take it. He's right, Lucy. You would have taken Stan from me. And all I've got left is Chip. And I'm going to keep him, do you hear? I'm going to keep him. Ma. And don't you start talking like your father. Listen to me, Ma. He'd be ashamed of us, that's what. He'd be ashamed to hear us talk this way. After he done what he'd done. Maybe we won't win, Ma. Maybe they'll lick us again, but I'd rather fight him and lose and go on like this. You're right, Chip. Ma? Yes. Yeah. Get the petition. Petition? Uh, what you talking about, Sonny? Go get it, Ma. Uh, all right, Chip. Here it is. This is why they killed Stan, Mr. Cassidy. The petition. Yes, they got 50 ranchers here to sign it, demanding a new election. Then they backed out after Stan was killed. They knew their names on that thing would be their death warrants. I promised them I'd destroy it, but I didn't. It's still good, then. There's 50 names here. They can't all be cowards. All they need is someone to unite them, Cassidy. Ranchers got them buffaloed. They know they have no recourse to law. This is one time they got to take the law into their own hands. I don't think they're afraid of that bunch out in the hills. I think they're afraid of Fancher and Mayor Peasley and Judge Corson. That's what Stan said. And he was right. There's only one way to unite the people. And that's to force a showdown with those three crooks right in front of their eyes. Hmm, I uh, hear that's what the C.A. man tried to do. Yeah, but maybe I'll be luckier than the C.A. man. Put that petition in a good, safe place, Mrs. Marriott. It might come in handy before long. Hoppy is determined now that there is only one way to break the iron grip that Sheriff Fancher and his henchmen hold on the people of Cherokee City. To gamble everything on a public showdown with Fancher himself. As he listens to Hoppy's story the next day, Mayor Peasley acts vaguely as if he'd heard it before. Hmm. A petition, eh? A referendum, if you want to be proper. There are 50 names on it, more than enough to call for a new election. Got it with you? I'll haul it out when the time comes. And when'll it be, Cassidy? Oh, uh, the 
to hear you come in, Sheriff. I asked you a question, Cassidy. When do you propose to haul out this here petition? Oh, we'll need a few days to get organized, Sheriff. How about Saturday afternoon? Hmm. Uh, maybe you ought to understand one thing, Cassidy. Man in my position is only human. Uh, the legal angles notwithstanding. Mm-hmm. Now, this here thing kind of hurts my pride. Don't blame you a bit, Sheriff. I can sympathize with you, Fancher. I can't help feeling it's a scheme someone's engineering to blacken my reputation. Know what I mean? I'm not sure, but uh, go on anyway. And when I figure someone's out to give me a bad name, I can't help looking on it as a personal insult. I get you now. Just like the CA man, eh? That's right. Where do you want it? Yeah, out in front's good enough for me. Good. Now's as good a time as any. Let's go. Oh, I wouldn't be in a rush, Cassidy. The folks will want to see this. Let's give them a chance to spread the word around. And uh, maybe give you a chance to work out the preparations, eh? Like you did with the CA man. Get your hand off that gun, Sheriff. I'll kill you, Cassidy. I'll cut you down. You'll have your chance at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon when we have a public reading of the petition. Uh, how'd it go? That's uh, all set. Three o'clock next Saturday afternoon. Uh, where's Allison? Oh, he's taking Mrs. Marriott uh, out of town to a ranch of a friend of his. He says Fancher knows who got that petition. Figures she'll be safe out of the way till it's over. Uh, what about Chip? Well, I'm sticking it out, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see you there, Chipper. Good boy. Well, what's your next move, Huffy? Uh, we got four days till Saturday. Between us, we got to talk to every rancher in the county. Convince them that they got to be in town Saturday. They'll back down. They can't back down. They won't fight now. They're all washed up. We've got to convince them of that. We'll do our writing at night. I don't want Fancher to know too much about what we're doing. When's Allison due back? About an hour or so. Good. It'll be dark around 8. We'll move at 8.30. I ain't looking for trouble, Cassidy. I... They're levying on the trail herds now. First thing you know, they'll levy on your grazing stock, then on your house, then who knows what. Are you going to take it or are you going to fight back? Well, I... Well, what? That Fancher, he'll do anything. I ain't got no defense. Listen, against... now, get this. I'll take care of Fancher. All I'm asking is for you to show up Saturday afternoon to back me up. All you've got to do is be there. Well, all right, Cassidy. You can count on me. Them's the facts, ma'am. It's put up or shut up next Saturday afternoon. I got you, Carlson. My old man will be there if I have to drag him to town by the hair. I've got to have your promise, Mr. Jenkins. You've got to promise to be there Saturday. Well, Chip, if you've got sand enough to fight Sheriff Rancher at 14, I reckon I ought to have it at 73. I'll be there, loaded for bear. What's that? They've covered the county. Every rancher in the district will be in town tomorrow afternoon. Oh, good. I always play better to a full house. Shep. Yes, Sheriff? What is it? We're riding a spooky bronc tomorrow. You know that. No, I don't know that. You don't know much else besides that Winchester, do you? That's what I'm paid for. That's enough. Better be enough. Tomorrow. You going to call in the boys, Sheriff? All 12 of them? <laughs> This is a poker game we've been playing, Mr. Mayor. We've been sitting up to the table for five years now with a pair of deuces playing our hand like it was a royal flush. They figure we got a hundred men in the hills. Ain't going to give them a reason to think different. That engine sign you got on them ain't going to last forever. It'll last as long as I need it. They're still afraid of me. After I cut Cassidy down tomorrow, there won't be no more back talk. If there is, we handle it like we did Marriott. A couple of night rides, maybe a corpse or two, and they all fall back into line. What about tomorrow? You, you, you'll use the meat store again. Why, you loco, they'll be expecting It's us. the last thing they'll be expecting. The woman's out of town, the stall will be closed up. You can break in through the back door, go out the same way. I'll line Cassidy up so you'll get a clear shot. Oh, uh, only one thing. What's that? That Winchester. 
I don't want you seen around town with a rifle. Ditch it somewhere back of the store tonight. Understand? Okay, Patrick. Yeah, that does it, then. Mayor. Yeah? Bust out a bottle. Let's have a drink to the coming festivity. Here, what time is it, Mayor? Five past three. You don't suppose Cassidy's backing out, do you? He wouldn't be the first one to. Well, sorry I'm late, Fancher. Had some trouble getting through the crowd. You, uh... All packed for the long trip? I am ready, if that's what you mean. What about the petition? Got it right here. Let me look at it. I'll keep it until after we uh, satisfy your honor. Better stick it in your boot. Be ashamed to put a hole in it. I'm about through talking. How do you want it now? Now the mayor will explain the procedure. There ain't nothing to it, Cassidy. Forty paces, both of you free to draw when the handkerchief hits the ground. That's fair enough. Let's go. <laughs> Shep, not the same way. Shut up, kid. I'll blow you to bits. Oh, no, you won't. They'd hear the shot up there. Oh, you won't do any shooting except the one big one, Shep. The one Fancher's paying you for. You shut your mouth, you hear? Look. Look, they're stepping it off up there. Now, you better forget about me. Cassidy ain't the kind of a gunslinger you can miss more than once, Shep. Yeah, he's sure death as far as a 44 shell will reach. <laughs> okay, sonny, rest a while on the floor. Now... There they go. Kids are right. Can't miss Cassidy. I won't miss. Not at this range. Okay, Mr. Cassidy. Here's your bullet. the boardwalks of Cherokee's Main Street, tense, every eye on Hopalong Cassidy as he steps off his 20 paces, and there is a gasp as a shot rings out. Go ahead, Mayor. Drop that handkerchief. We're ready. Uh, wait a minute, Mayor. What's the matter, Fancher? Uh, there, there's something wrong. Do what I told you, Mayor. Drop that handkerchief or I'll let you have it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you ready, Chase? Oh, wait, wait. Go ahead. Here she goes. <laughs> Oh, Cassidy, no, no. Pick up your gun, you yellow coyote. Pick it up. Oh, for Pete's sake, Cassidy, no, no. No, no. The first one just dusted off your hand, Sheriff. Number two's the big one. Go ahead. Reach for that gun. No, I'm, I'm through fighting. I'll talk. I'll, I'll do anything. Just let me live. Quiet, everyone. Quiet, please. I don't have to say much. You can see for yourself what you've been afraid of. Yeah. He's big and he talks loud, but he's yellow. And you, all of you, are as much to blame for Fancher and the whole crooked tribe as they are. You were yellow, too. You laid down and took it. You let a brave man like Stan Merritt go down fighting a year ago while you ran for cover. That's right. I got a piece of paper in my hand here. The petition he died for. It's going to give you a new set of officials. A fresh start. Something that's worth fighting to keep. Good. Allison. Copy. Read them the petition. You can hold the election right here and now. And your first duty as the new sheriff will be to string up those three crooks and send a posse after their henchmen in the hills. Yeah. 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 Better get down to the meat store. I think the kid's hurt. Chip. Chipper, what happened? Cassidy. You all right? Yeah. Where is he? Where's Shep? On the floor, next to the door. Something almost blew his head off. Oh, he was set to do it again. Oh, that's why Fancher... Yeah, I know he was coming when I found his gun last night, so I waited here. What happened to him? The breach exploded in his face. 
I knew it would. I was afraid he'd find it. Find what? The barrel of the gun. I filled it last night with hot towels. Well, I'll be golden. Oh, Chip. Well, you did me a mighty big favor, Chip. Thanks. I did it partly for you, Mr. Cassidy, but mostly for my pa. <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy and California. These partners will be riding out again soon into a threatening episode, and we hope you'll be with us. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Border of Nowhere was written by Harold Swanson. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Moe. This is a Commodore production.